Welcome back subscribers, it's me, the finance guy, back with another video today guys, and today we're going to be doing our three picks for the month of July. If this is the first time you joining us here on the channel, feel free to subscribe and hit that bell, because I make videos all the time covering stocks I think will do well in the future, and I think you guys can learn a lot. Let's jump into it today, and let's get started with number one. So let's talk about 3M. And as always, make sure you're doing your own research when it comes to investing. As I'm not your financial advisor, as always, I always want to start with the brands or products that are available from the company so you guys can understand what you might be putting your money towards. 3M is one of those companies with a staggering amount of products. They vary from, you know, tapes to like air filtration products to stuff like Scotch Bright, but it falls into a category of an amazing amount of products that this company has, including consumer based and business based products. And you could check it out on their website. They have over 22,538 products and it's just absolutely staggering. And that comes highly recommended by me for you to go out and look at some of these products and see, hey, maybe there's something there that I really like or like about the company. I think that there was probably about 20 to 35 products that I actually use on a regular basis when it comes to doing any kind of construction. So that company actually has quite a bit of business coming from me and I didn't even know about it. Let's look into the past history stock price of this company and see if it's doing on a little bit of a dip and if this could be a decent buying opportunity. First, let's look at its past history. And as you can see, it was at $1.50 at one point. Right now, it's at $200 a share. And you might be thinking to yourself, wow, that's like pretty expensive uh, based upon where it was in the past. But on a company that continues to grow, sometimes that's just the way things work. And it's on a bit of a dip right now from its 250s highs. Next, I would like to look at its dividend and make sure that it's going on a steady upward trend. This is something I always really like to see in a company, a steady upward trend when it comes to its dividend payout. It had a little bit of a dip uh, in the early um, 2000s, as you can see, but so far since then, it's been an ever increasing amount. That's something I always really like to see in a stock, and it looks like this is doing pretty good. Next, I'd like to look at the PE ratio and make sure that it's at a decent fair price. Obviously, I could tell that this company is a little bit more expensive, but I think during this dipping opportunity, it could be maybe a potential buy. I would like to see it come down somewhere around the 15 PE ratio. So I would like to see the share price somewhere around the $150 range before I get super excited with this stock, but let's look at it anyway. As you can see, this company had a PE ratio of 10 to 11 back in the early 2000s. I think that's a really fair PE ratio for this company and uh, 11 to 12 in 2012 to 13. And as time has gone by, it's ever increased. And now its PE ratio is somewhere around actually 20, uh, 20.69. Next, let's look at the revenue, make sure that it's consistent and going on the upward trend as well. As you can see, this is definitely on an upward trend and has done really well. It has a stopping point around 2008, 2009, where it had a downward trend. A lot of businesses went through a suffering point at that time, but I still think this company will do well in the future. Just expect some kind of downward trend if we're going to go into a housing market crash or the housing market business is failing. Next, I'd like to look at their debts to their equity. At this point, this company has had a pretty decently high, but I think it's offset by the cash flow coming from the company. With that also being said, it has had better points of debt to equity ratios. As you can see, it's had a really good DE ratio in the early 2000s or mid 2000s. And as time has gone by, it's accrued more debt, something that I don't like to see from a company, but this company is quite big and quite strong, so I think it could pay it off in time. I just like to see this happen a little bit sooner. Next, let's look at the shares outstanding and make sure that it's on a downward trend so that we see less shares in the market valuing our stock price going up. Well, as you can see, this is definitely on a downward trajectory. I'd like to always see this when it comes to picking up shares of a company, and I hope it remains so for years to come. Let's look at the cash flow and make sure that it's consistent, at least going steady or up. As we can see, this company has a decent steady positive cash flow, something I always really like to see in a company. That's on a little bit of a dip, but I still think it can do well in the future. And some of my final thoughts is I think this company could do incredibly well in the future just based upon how long it's been around and how many products it has and its strength of this company. 
I think this company could do incredibly well for years to come and pay out a steady dividend. And that's something I always like to see when it comes to investing. With that being said, if I was to rank this stock in a, on a chart from one to 10, I would rank it out of seven. So I think it's a seven out of 10 on a company that I would like to invest in in the future. The second stock pick is NVIDIA. And some of you might be thinking to yourself, it's priced pretty high right now. And didn't you just do a video on why you're interested in this company? I did. So check out some of my other videos on why I'm interested in this company. I did a video just the other day about why I think NVIDIA is doing really well and could do really well in the future, even though Bitcoin is suffering. So let's jump into it today on why I think NVIDIA will do well in the future. This company has a large amount of products that I think are available to the future tech industry. And I think a lot of people are missing the point when it comes to Nvidia. With that being said, maybe I'm wrong and this company could fail and drop down to a drastically lower price. But I think this company will do well because they're one of the greatest innovators when it comes to creating the best GPUs on the planet, which stands for graphical processing units. For anyone that happens to be into computers knows that this is one of the key fundamentals to creating a strong computer that has visuals that are absolutely mind blowing when it comes to graphics and any kind of cool com computing power. With that being said, I also think that this company may see some downward potential basically because people were using GPUs for cryptocurrency mining and I think that this company could see a little bit of a slack in sales and thus decreasing the amount of revenue that this company has but I am fully bullish on this company and any sort of weakness will create a buying opportunity for me personally in the future. This company is kind of taking the center stage when it comes to artificial intelligence and some of the deep learning possibilities that is coming for the future. I think this company could do incredible things. Also, the amount of gaming applications with people becoming more and more into gaming and esports will push this company even to higher evaluations just because there will be more and more gamers in the future. Any of you have, that have spent time playing any kind of VR game knows that this is necessary to have high graphics processing units for it to be able to render any kind of cool new virtual reality world. Let's look at the stock's priced history and see if now might be a good time to buy. As you can see, the stock of this company has gone up exponentially recently in the past two years. It has really rose to incredible levels and it's on a little bit of a dip just recently. Let's look at its dividend history and see if it's paid a long dividend history. Unfortunately, it hasn't because it is a growth stock and it just recently started to pay a dividend. Ultimately, I think this company is just starting on its dividend journey and I think it could do really well in the future, but it's just starting, so it's not a whole lot. Next, let's look at the PE ratio and make sure that it's at a cheap evaluation. Unfortunately, this stock is an incredibly high PE ratio. I would like to see a downward potential of this stock coming down to at least $120 before I would be kind of really interested in picking up shares. Unfortunately, I don't think that will ever occur, but if it was, I would definitely be more interested in this stock. All right, as you can see, it's had a pretty high PE ratio for a decent amount of time. It had a decent PE ratio back in 2011, around the 11-12 PE ratio. And as time has gone by, it's become more and more expensive. Keep in mind, there has been different changes in the company with some external growth through things other besides just the graphics cards. So that's also why they're seeing some additional growth and additional expense. Its current PE ratio is somewhere around the $40 mark, which is making this stock quite expensive. Next, let's jump into the revenue and make sure that it's on a strong upward trend. Its revenue has shot up just as of recently in the past two years, mostly probably because of the cryptocurrency market and how that's changed the game a little bit. And we shall see if that actually continues on years from now, but I'm more interested in its deep learning applications. Next, let's look at the company's debt to equity ratio and make sure that that's still remaining decently steady. As you can see, as time has gone by, this company has actually had incredibly low debt until just recently into 2017, 16, 18. There's been a little bit more debt, but it's still ratio is incredible. Let's make sure that they're cash flow positive on a strong upward trend. All right, as we can see, the cash flow from this company is quite steady and on the upward trend and as of recently is rocketing right up. 
All right, let's look at the shares outstanding. Ultimately, we want to see less and less shares outstanding in the market, as that means that the value of those shares will be more in the future. This company's got a little bit of whipsawing when it comes to the amount of shares outstanding in the company, something that I really don't like seeing. But as always, it doesn't mean that this company is a bad buy, even though that there's more and more shares outstanding. Ultimately, I think that the growth potential of this company will be extraordinary and it will continue to do well in the future. With that being said as well, I give this company an 8 out of 10 of what I would like to see in a company and as it's increasing its revenue growth and exponential growth in general, I think that there might be some weakness in the stock just because they're going to be having a little bit of a recall when it comes to some of their GPUs and they might have an excessive amount because the amount of people that are mining Bitcoin has decreased and through that weakness I would like to pick up some shares of the company. We shall see if that actually happens because they're actually trying to push out a new architecture for their GPUs and I think that they might be able to get it out in time before their shares drop but with that being said we'll see how things pan out for the future and I look forward to purchasing this stock if it ever comes on a fire sale. The next company I'm going to talk to you guys about I'm really excited about because chances are not any investor out there will be featuring this in their videos. No one out there is going to be picking this stock because no one knows about it or very few people know about it because it flies under the radar. And with that being said, I would like to jump into this stock today. Number three is Cognex. And a lot of you might be thinking to yourself, what, what is this company? I don't know who this is. And I have a tendency to look at a lot of companies. I turn over a lot of rocks when it comes to investing. And this is one of these companies that I am really interested in for the applications for the future. Number one being in that aspect is sometimes investors get things wrong. They want to invest in the company of the future, but why invest into the Amazon in the future when you can invest into maybe potentially the cardboard box making company? Why invest into, you know, the pot stocks of the future when you can invest into the fertilizers. Do you see where I'm going with this? So Cognex fits into that category today and let's jump into why I think this company is really interesting. Receive, fulfill, and ship. That's the daily 24 seven operation of the world's largest online retailers and distribution centers. Being able to quickly and accurately read tracking codes is at the core of a successful automated operation. Let's take a look as we experience the journey of a package through a distribution center and show you how Cognex barcode reading solutions help companies like yours cut costs while maximizing throughput and efficiency. No matter the size of your operation, fulfillment starts with an empty box and a tracking label. This label is going to be read throughout the fulfillment process, so this is a critical step to get right. There are typically two issues that arise at this early stage, printing and label placement. Low contrast, smudged or wrinkled labels are hard to read, and labels flagged off the edge of the box risk falling off altogether. Both scenarios lower read rates and lead to costly manual rework and delays. To minimize this impact, Cognex image-based barcode readers catch these issues early on. Companies use Cognex readers to grade the quality of the printed label and verify that it can be read successfully before it's applied to the box. Tush, you gotta be kidding me. Label readers, that's what you're excited about? That's the thing that you really want to show me today? Are you for real? Oh yeah. You betcha. And you want to know why I think that? I'll tell you right now. I think that a lot of companies in the future are going to need more and more e-commerce to survive. And the more and more of those Macy's bringing your clothes to you through a form of boxes, whatever it may be, will increase in time. The next JD, the next Amazon, the next big company of the future, or big companies of the future, I think will continue to grow in the next 10 to 20 years. And some people think that brick and mortar stores will remain around, and I think they will to some degree, but I think a lot of other businesses out there will find ways to deliver products to people's homes for convenience-based purposes. I can't tell you how many people 
don't like to go out and pick up their their food when they can have it delivered to them. Think about their clothes. Think about all the other kind of e-commerce that could be developed in the future and what company could develop a, a long standing of having their product in their factories. Cognex. Let's look at the stock price and see if it's came down a little bit and maybe it might be a buying opportunity for you. As you can see, the stock price of this stock has drastically increased over the past two years to a point where it reached an all-time high of $70 a share. Now it's cratered back down to $44 a share and I think that it's still priced decently high based upon its PE ratio. Let's check out the dividend and make sure it's on a nice steady uptrend. Alright guys, as you can see here, this company had a dividend stop at one point. It paid out a high dividend and then just cut it to the uh, beginning of 2015, something I never really like to see in a company. Next let's check the company's PE ratio and see if it's ever come down to a fairer evaluation and if it's at a good price right now. Alright, as you can see, this company's really never had a cheap evaluation, maybe 16 PE um, back in 2012, and then again at 15 PE down in 2015. This company is really hard to get on a fire sale. As right now, it's at like a 40 PE ratio, I think. Oh no, 31 PE ratio. Next, let's jump into the revenue, make sure it's going up. All right, guys, as you can see, as time has gone by, the revenue from this company has increased, increased, increased. That's something I always like to see in a company is increased revenue. All right, let's look into the company's debt to equity ratio and make sure that it is steady or at least on the decline. Haha, -ha, got you guys. It doesn't have any debt. Get wrecked. Next, let's look at the shares outstanding and make sure it's on a decline. So the amount of shares outstanding for this company is actually on the increase, something I don't like to see, but it's still not a metric ton, so that makes it okay. Next, let's look at the cash flow and make sure it's positive and on the uptrend. As you can see, this company has a nice steady uptrend and it's doing really well with its cash flow. Overall, I think this company could do incredibly well in the future with e-commerce and embedding itself into kind of the backbone infrastructure of label reading through lasers. I think that this company could do incredibly well, though I think that it's not the only company out there and it does have competitors. I still think Cognex can do really well in the future, thus making this price at a decent buy right now. Overall, I give this stock a 7 out of 10 of what I would like to buy in the future. Wow, did you guys make it all the way through the video? I hope you did. I hope you didn't skip through all the points and looking at things. But if you did, thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch my videos. Feel free to subscribe and hit the bell as I make videos all the time, like topics that I like to cover like this. And I think you might be surprised on what kind of companies I'll be picking in the future. With that being said, I hope to see you guys again next time.